Ridge Holland versus Gallus in a gauntlet match. Dude, this was everything that sucks about <laughs> NXT. You got Ridge Holland out there who has no friends, and they've tried to explain why, but we don't have a good reason. We have no good reason to why nobody ever helps this guy. Yeah, he's had a couple of accidents here and there, but he's painted as a sympathetic babyface, and everyone else is an asshole. They never come out to help him. He's going up against all three of Gallus in a handicap match, so he looks dumb. Nobody cares about Gallus. They're doing this match, and there's no heat for him and Wolfgang. It's just dead. And then they go to fucking commercial, and the goddamn match ends during the commercial break. Yes. Okay? He, that shit didn't even happen in WCW. Total fucking amateur hour bullshit. I hate it when they do it in a rounds match, but at least in a rounds match, it's like, well, you know, we had to go to commercial during a fucking round. It's stupid, but, like, they do it. But to have a fucking finish in a match during a commercial, and then, you know, the next guy comes in, and we end up, uh, you know, Joey yanks him out of the ring for a DQ. A fucking DQ? So now apparently the gauntlet's over, even though he won that match via DQ. Like, shouldn't he go on to Joe Coffee or whatever? But no, they just say it's done. And then they triple team him, and it's like, who could possibly care? Nobody comes out to help the guy again, because he's a loser. Even though he's supposed to be a babyface we're supposed to get behind. And I was just like... And then, you know, to top it all off, your boy Vic, he says, and with his past, does Holland have to come to grips with something oh my deeper God. Oh, that, line. that even he oh. doesn't see? So, yeah, it's, it's Vic and what Byron. What in the fuck are you talking about? It's Vic and Byron Saxton. I vowed I was giving them three strikes this week after the disaster of last week. I pondered giving them a strike early in this match when Byron said, the power of self-talk can destroy you from the inside out if you let it. I decided to give him the pass on that one. It's a little generous, but then yes. With his past, does Holland need to come to grips with something deeper that he even doesn't see? It sucked. It sucked. Yeah. I think of the many, 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 many offenses in the segment, the worst is just that I went to commercial, and it's it's a uh, uh, Ridge wrestling Wolfgang, and we go to break, and we come back, and he's just wrestling the other coffee. Yeah, they did at least show a replay, but yeah, and uh, yeah. And did you mention how they still haven't mentioned why Ridge feels so guilty? No, they, they they're only alluding to it. He has well, his past is all they say. Yeah, what he hurt Ilya Dragunov, and then Ilya was fine two weeks later. Yes, well, that's the fucking. They so he has you. no friends because he accidentally hurt somebody in a match? Do you realize how stupid this is? Every fucking match you hurt somebody this, in storyline. It's the goal. That's the it's fucking the point. stated purpose. What, you think it's a Michinoku driver? Here. What the fuck do you think a Michinoku driver is supposed to do? You're dropping the guy in his head trying to fucking hurt him. But Rich Holland does a suplex. The guy can't get up. Now he's a bad guy. He has no friends. Nobody ever comes to his aid. They're like, fuck that guy. He did a move on somebody. Fuck him. Oh, that's happened. Stupid. Vaughn Wagner and Mr. Stone are mourning their loss backstage when Lexus King has along to bury them. Especially Mr. Stone. You lose all the time, he says. Well, he does. I mean, technically it's true, but he's had two matches. Uh, Stone, you want your kids to look up to a winner? They should watch me. See, all of this can be used by Vaughn in a storyline. You sent me out there against Lexus King. I lost again. And why did I go out there? You didn't give a shit about me. You cared about your kids. What he said about your kids. You don't care about me. It's easy. Yeah. Don't fuck this up. The no quarter catch crew was ogling the Heritage Cup. I think they're ever going to wrestle a match. They they announced that our contract says we pick who wrestles, and then they never wrestle. Yeah. So I like the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. They kind of are. Yeah. Actually, in a lot of ways, and I think about it, but. It's a bloody shame this Heritage Cup is held by some clown and Noam Dar comes in and they all bury each other for a while. When you're done messing around and playing with managers, the No Quarter Catch crew plans on representing that cup correctly. You know how we have the Hall of Awesome? <laughs> I do. We need to have a Hall of Shit. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, we had that angle in AW a while back with Miro and... and uh, His wife. His wife. 
that we couldn't for the life of us figure out. What the hell ever happened to them, by the way? I don't know. They vanished. <laughs> I mean, she had the finger issue, but she came back. And yeah. But anyway, the point is, that was a horrible storyline. It was, yes. And in NXT, we have two contenders for the Hall of Shit. One of them is this fucking Joe Gacy thing. It's absolute an absolute atrocity. But actually, I can't believe I'm saying this. But even worse than the Joe Gacy storyline is the Lyra Valkyra Tatum Paxley storyline. It is the worst storyline in all of wrestling. I hate this storyline more than the Miro storyline. Wow. I hate it more than the AEW rankings. I can't think of anything I hate more in this business, storyline-wise, than Tatum Paxley and Lyra Valkyra. It's Lola Vice against Tatum Paxley. And fucking Tatum Paxley is apparently a baby face. Okay? She is a creepy stalker. But she's a baby face. Okay? Mm -hmm. So she comes out. And Byron is trying to explain to us that this creepy fucking stalker has, quote, good intentions. Mm. I know you haven't been around, Byron, but what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Are we watching a different show? So then Lyra... Well, you're watching it, so that's one up on you. ...who has told Tatum repeatedly, like, go away, leave me alone, I don't want anything to do with you, she suddenly runs out to support Tatum Paxley in this match. I'm thinking, what? Why in the fuck are you out here? So Tatum makes a comeback. Lola kicks her. And she goes for a cover. And Lyra reaches for this woman she is stalking to kick out. I'm like, fuck this storyline. Lyra. Uh, oh, uh, then Lola gives her a back fist. Tatum kicks out again, reaching for Lyra. Lola puts her in a triangle. Tatum reaches desperately for Lyra. Lyra is cheering her on. You can do it. Come on. Don't quit. She dies. And I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> no. She died. She went unconscious and she didn't wake up and she didn't move. She's dead. So Lyra, a victim of this crazed stalker, carries her lifeless body to the backstage area. So jumping forward, we get to the backstage area. Lyra carries her to the back and she lays her in a box and Tatum is dead. She is unmoving. She is limp. Her eyes are closed. She is passed on from this mortal coil. Yes. She has ceased to be. She is deceased. Yes. Flatlined. Where the fuck are the fucking people who are supposed to be caring for her, by the way? There's nobody. Shotzi then walks up, sees a dead body on a box. She don't give a fuck. I want to match with you, Lyra. I want to match with you. Lyra says, oh, yeah? She doesn't care about the dead body either. Oh, yeah? Well, fuck, let's do it next week. All right, let's do it. So Shotzi then says, oh, now that that's done, why don't you take care of your friend? And Lyra, who went to ringside, cheered her on, pounded the mat, told her not to give up, supported her, carried her dead body to the back, protected her. Lyra screams at Shotzi, She's not my friend! Tatum comes to life. It's a miracle. Just wakes up and says, So, we have Shotzi next week. She's been awake the whole time. She's faking being dead. Very well. That's the best thing she ever did was fake dead. I hate this storyline with all of my soul. Every last bit of my soul, which at this point is still in my body. 
I hate this storyline. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. It's the worst storyline in all of wrestling. And it is the worst storyline I've seen in years. All right. I'd rather talk about AEW rankings. Okay. In a positive, glowing manner. I hate this storyline. All right. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.